What's up, guys? Welcome to the Stash Free Sports channel. Here to bring you an NFL free agent prediction video on Stephon Gilmore. I believe the veteran corner will sign with the Green Bay Packers this offseason. Let's get into it, guys. So now that the 2024 NFL draft is over, the waters are kind of less murky for some of these leftover veterans that, that didn't sign during the main free agency period. You know, Justin Simmons, the Stephon Gilmores, the OBJs, the list goes on. It's about a good a good 10 to 12 real notable names. Ryan Tannehill, you know, so uh, there's some guys out there that I believe, and I think y'all should believe that they will be on a team sometime this year. They're just waiting on, you know, out of the draft, how things shake up, how things look, the landscape of some of these teams. And I think Stephon Gilmore to the Packers, to me, make a lot of sense. Uh, the Packers, for some reason, you know, I, I know for me personally, but a lot of Packers fans also felt that the Packers were, were going to go corner pretty early. And they had their chance a couple times, or they were close, but no cigar. On, on, I think if some guys would have failed to their spots, like a TJ Tampa, uh, what, in the third round, if I'm not mistaken, a couple other guys as well that fit the singly Packers system, I think it made sense, but it, it didn't quite happen. Uh, they, they didn't pick a cornerback until pick 255. So with that being the case, they didn't add really – any star power or any, not even star power, but any good depth to the cornerback spot where I think they do need helping. They did put a lot of, a lot of uh, draft assets into the safety spot. Also, free agency, they brought in, brought in Xavier McKinney from the Giants. I predicted, I predicted that move about a week or two in advance before it happened. To me, it just made sense. You know, uh, he, he fit greatly in uh, the new D coordinator, Jeff Halfley's system. And I'm one more prediction, I think, Stephon Gilmore will be a part of the Packers as well. Uh, Eric Stokes, pretty young, been around for a couple years now. He is good, but he's struggled with his health, and that's the main thing. You know, leaving Jair, uh, Jair Alexander out there by himself uh, as the main corner, you know, it's kind of tough sometimes. You know, you can't you can't cover both sides. And uh, Alexander, who wasn't the greatest last year, did play well. I do expect him to bounce back and be even better than he was last season, but. Uh, you need someone on the other side to really lock down, or at least put a better effort, or at least be available. You know, and Stokes uh, hasn't really done that uh, on a consistent basis. That's why I think Stephon Gilmore come in. Now, Gilmore, he is a veteran. He is getting older, 33 years old, uh, a few years away now from his former 2019 Defensive Player of the Year award season. You know, uh, but he's still good. He's still he's still serviceable. He's still a starting corner, in my opinion. And I think he's probably the best option for this Packers team. And let and don't forget the Packers and Stephon Gilmore. They have a history. You know, um, back when I forgot what year it was, but when Stephon Gilmore was traded to the Panthers for a six round pick, the Packers were his reportedly were, uh, was the team he wanted to go to. The only thing was Brian Gutekunst and the Packers couldn't free up the salary cap space to land him to pair him up with Rodgers. Well, not pair him, but, you know, have have to give Rodgers and Jair Alexander another corner. Uh, they couldn't quite do that at, at that time because of salary cap purposes. But uh, reportedly they were his number one option. Didn't happen, but uh, I do see it now as a great fit. As I said, not the player he once was, not the shutdown, lockdown guy, but he's still, like I said, still good. Only allowed four passing touchdowns last year, and a percent and, and, the, and the catch percentage against him, which I'm not a PFF guy, but watching the Cowboys games, he didn't give up uh, give up too too many. He did get torched a couple times by a couple players, but you know they're number ones because remember Trayvon Diggs went down last year, so he was guarding number one guy for the most part for the Cowboys. So if you give him a number twos, let Jair worry about the, the number ones. Then at Nickelback, you can either move Stokes to Nickelback or you can keep Nixon there. I think that's – or, as I said, uh, the slot, you can have Xavier McKinney come down and, and grab, grab the slot up. Then that's not bad. You know, I think that's a very, very, very strong Packers defense. And, look, this defense is already set as to be, to me, one of better defenses. Last year they underachieved. Um, I made a couple of videos. I forgot the, the D coordinator names now for the Packers last season, but uh, Joe Barry, some, Joe, some Barry, Joe Barry, Tom Barry, something like that, but I did a couple of videos on him last year, uh, and it was three. Two were negative and one was positive, and I thought 
the playoff run could have maybe saved them, but it didn't happen. But Joe, Joe Barry had his team going when it really mattered most. I don't know if it was him, was it the team, or, you know, just a bad year overall. But Joe Barry, at first, you know, the first two the first two videos were definitely negative, wanting him to be fired by, by the Packers. The near-perfect game by Baker Mayfield, and then it was one more, I think the the Panthers versus uh, the, the Packers when Bryce Young did look pretty good and played his best game as an NFL career so far. I thought Joe Barry should have been fired, but the playoff run did change my mind on me, uh, change, change my mind on, on, on him. And, uh, you know, I think the Packers were kind of just fed up with him. So obviously the, the, the change was made. But uh, now in the new Jeff Halfley system, I do believe they will be better. And, uh, you know, they're, they're stacked everywhere. They have depth everywhere. They, they address the corner. Uh, they, excuse me, they address the safety needs heavily. They drafted two safety. Uh, Javion Bullard, very good. Uh, Evan Williams, uh, more of a depth piece, special teams guy right now, but he can be he can be good. They did draft one corner in Kalen King I like a lot, uh, but he's kind of had a rough 2023. He was better in 2020, uh, in 2022 than it was last season, but we'll see if he can bounce back and shake back. But he's more of a project, you know, um, see what he has later. He's not really a, a guy who can contribute right now, in my opinion. Then they brought in middle linebacker Adrian Cooper um, with a second second uh, round, 24th pick. Uh, excuse me. Uh, no, I'm wrong there. Excuse me. Scratch that. <laughs> don't know where I got that from. Yeah, my nose are tripping. Uh, they brought in Tyron Hopper. Um, weak side linebacker, and then the main thing to me, uh, Marshawn Lloyd, backup running back. I like it a lot. Uh, he's gonna back up Josh Jacob, who has who has been banged up here and there. You know, uh, Michael Pratt as well to battle it out with uh, Sean Clifford, and they, uh, they brought in um, as well as one of my favorite tackles in Jordan Morgan. Uh, he's he did very well also. So um, overall, man. This Packers team looks very good. Good depth everywhere. Good running back depth now. Uh, receiving depth been there the entire time. You know they, they did a good job last year drafting two rookies, and uh, Wicks and Reed, and those guys really stood out uh, real well last year for that Packers team. And the funny thing is that they've been they haven't drafted the first round receiver. Um, in a good little while, but they've done well. You know, their two top guys uh, came in 2022 draft and, and uh, Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. And you also have last year uh, two two guys who contributed right, right away in Jalen Reed last year's draft and then uh, Dontavian Wicks from Georgia, if I'm not mistaken, uh, came last year in the fifth round. So um, they've always, you know, they never gave, they never gave Rogers a first round target, but he never didn't have weapons, you know, and, uh, his last year with Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson and that was pretty solid. So, uh, I, I think they're doing love pr pretty good and stick with, and they stick to the same game plan. You know, we don't need a true number one, give you three or four number twos and a couple number threes in there. And, you know, you should get the job done with a good old line, good run game, the main thing I always say with the Packers, the main thing I always say, you have to run the ball more. With Aaron Jones, with A.J. Dillon, you got two good backs, use them. And it felt like sometimes they just wanted to see the arm talent of Rodgers and also with J J uh, Jordan Love as well with the head coach calling plays, Matt, Matt LaFleur. I've always been, always been on him a, 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 about that in my Packers videos. You know, they have the – they had the running talent. They just don't run the ball as they should, in my opinion. And, you know, um, now with Lloyd, Jacobs, and Dylan, I would love to see all three guys get some burn if they all can stay healthy. All three guys get get, get burn and then love to play action. I know he got a great arm, great talent, all that stuff, but you don't have to use it every time. You know, you can definitely pound and ground with these three running backs in a good old line, in which they do have. And then the defense, you know, Rashawn Gary, Luke, Luke Van Ness, uh, first-round pick from last year, played solid. Kenny Clark, uh, Devontae Wyatt, you know, they, they have the pieces. They have the pieces, man, to stop the run, to to, to uh, mess with you in the pass as well, shut down the pass when given the right tools and, and the right pieces. And uh, as I said, bringing in Stephon Gilmore to take the spot of Eric Stokes, moving him back.